I started talking about accelerated driven systems by since uh, Google conference in 2010. This is the 14th year, I, I guess, after that. We actually did a session on the ADS systems at that time. And Professor Furukawa actually gave a talk about his AMSP at that time. We'll look into that later. As you see here, I have many hats. I am affiliated to World Dominion University, Virginia Commonwealth, Commonwealth University, and Virginia Tech. Uh, they're all Virginia universities. I also started a, a, a nonprofit organization called ISOHIM, uh, which is uh, International Symposium on Hygiene and Matter. So if you think about uh, philosophically and spiritually, we are all hydrogenoids, and hydrogen gives us energy in the form of ATP. So that's where it starts. Hydrogen is the fundamental uh, atomic system, and which has one proton in the center and one electron, and the, the energy force is basically the uh, basis of all this. If you start from that, and we can build up the rest. So as part of uh, what I was doing uh, at that time, at the request of the Indian uh, uh, atomic energy people, I started something called Virginia ADS Consortium. Uh, started in 19, uh, I think 98 or something like that, and anyway, so that became a precursor to Virginia Nuclear Energy Consortium, uh, which is a government body of the state of Virginia, uh, which established Virginia Nuclear Energy Consortium. And to take this concept of hydrogen, uh, basically into the energy system, I came up with this BSE Systems Inc. in 2019, uh, mainly because the proton-driven accelerator systems are going to be complex and they're going to be very expensive. Uh, the idea here is to use the electrons as the driver for uh, transmuting uh, thorium to uranium-233. That is the basis of this forming this company. Anyway, in this talk, I would like to go back to historical perspectives on thorium and Homi Baba, who is the Indian scientist, who is part of the nuclear establishment in 1950s, also died uh, in a plane crash in near Geneva, unfortunately. Uh, well, anyway, so I thought I, I'll let you know about this in case you are not aware of it. And then we will talk about critical and subcritical nuclear energy technologies, and then the BSC's ASMR, which is Advanced Subcritical Microreactor. I will introduce the topic and then close with a summary. So you might know that uh, Dwight Eisenhower president, he, August 8, 1953, announced at the United Nations Conference, Atoms for Peace. And we are still a long way achieving this. And I think the time may be ripe now that we should take this to heart and do our best to accomplish this, whatever he promised the world. And in 1954, first United Nations Peace for Atoms Conference, Dr. Homi Baba, shown here on the right side, uh, was elected as the president of this unique first conference of atomic, atoms for peace at the United Nations in Geneva. And he, unfortunately, passed away. He was responsible for establishing the uh, Department of Atomic Energy in India. So I think this is very important. He also came up with the idea of uh, nuclear, three-stage nuclear program in India, mainly because India doesn't have uranium. He realized that India has a plentiful amount of thorium, which is monoxide sand around the coastline of India. And here I need to also point out the superconductivity was derived because of the helium that was heated up by the monocyte sand was taken to the Europe to be liquefied into liquid helium. That uh, was the basis of uh, the superconductive science and technology, which is part of this accelerated driven systems, as you see. So it is. Uh, 
Interesting to note, historically speaking, that Oak Ridge uh, director uh, in 1940s actually proposed the uh, molten salt reactor, fluoride-based, and which was implemented in 1960s, which took uh, almost 25 years from the concept to the realization of the program under the direction of Weinberg. Uh, Alvin Weinberg, uh, I think we need to really remember this and then work towards really pushing the thorium technology in the world because uh, you have seen the reasons why it's so important. The goal he has set out is cheap and abundant nuclear energy is no longer a luxury. It will eventually be a necessity for maintenance of the human condition. And that's a similar concept from Homi Baba, who also started a thorium program way back in 1954 in India. So why it's very important? If we want to get clean air and water for, the, for humanity, the only way we can accomplish that will be with thorium energy, from my perspective. So we'll look into this. This is the three-stage Indian nuclear program as envisaged by uh, Dr. Homi Baba. They, since India has only a small amount of uranium, they were using candus to produce plutonium. And that plutonium will be used in the uh, fast breeder reactors where the blanket of thorium will be converted into uranium-233. So actually, uh, they built a prototype fast breeder reactor near Chennai, Madras, uh, in India, and which was supposed to be operational in 2014. And finally, the fuel was loaded into this FB, PFBR uh, last month. It was announced by the Prime Minister of India. So uh, then uh, that uranium-233 that will come out of this, uh, a series of these uh, FBRs, uh, they will separate the uranium-233 and then build this uh, ASW, AHWRs. And this is the plan, and this will probably take 100 years for completion to have this fuel cycle to be closed. So I think we need to think about alternatives of doing this, and that is only possible with uh, the ADS, ad accelerated driven systems. And you know all these things, mainly US is the leader in the light water, light water reactor technology. And unfortunately, US has phased out itself from this technology because it's too expensive because of the safety concerns of such a system. And recently, Jack Devaney, who was the uh, who started Thorcon, he came up with this book where he states that underwriter certification of nuclear power is the only way to bring these systems to be successfully back in a commercial economic way. I think that's where I think we need to make progress, mainly because the control systems that are required are very expensive. Uh, that's the reason why uh, it's becoming uh, difficult, I think, in this technology. So, historically speaking, accelerators and fissile materials, as you see, uh, Lawrence has proposed in 1915 high power accelerators for producing fissile materials. And this was taken to heart by Professor Furukawa and the colleagues in Japan, and they came up with the uh, accelerator molten salt breeder reactors, AMSRs, which was actually presented at the Google conference in 2010. And in 1952, uh, Lewis, Professor Lewis, who is from Canada, proposed use of thorium with intense neutron generators. These are all very old concepts, and as I will show you, India thought about using the ADS to short circuit this three-stage program so that thorium can be implemented rather quickly. And that was the reason why I got involved into this program. And of course, as I mentioned, BSC systems is, uh, has a design 
that can be built within the next two to three years, if the funds are available, that can take thorium uh, itself and make it as a uranium-233 as a fast breeder. So this is India's vision uh, in earlier to use the ADS to basically produce uranium-233 in this process and short-circuit their three-stage program. And uh, they realized that this technology is so complex and expensive, uh, basically that is put on hold. And they're actually collaborating with uh, uh, the Fermi National Lab, Fermi Lab in Chicago to build these ADS systems, hopefully in the next couple of decades. So here I would like to look at how you can produce neutrons that are required in these reactors. It can be done either with protons, high energy protons, that is up to at least 600 MeV energy, and you need a lot of power for, from these, or electrons as ADS drivers. As you can see on the left side, the proton energy required for getting the required neutrons for these projects is going to be very expensive. It may cost several billion dollars to develop, and it's going to take decades long. For example, SNS is already built, which is, a, which is producing neutrons, but that is a pulsed machine. That is not viable for nuclear reactor technology. And whereas electrons only require about 50 MeV energy, and the number of neutrons produced with this system is not high enough to be practical for mega, multi hundred megawatt scale projects, but it can be used for a megawatt, tens of megawatts. It easily can be implemented. So we talked about uh, the, the professor from Turkey has talked about uh, Mira, not Carlo Rubias ADS, which basically is an energy amplifier where thorium can be used with these uh, neutrons that are coming out of the ADS system. But unfortunately, uh, the costs involved are so much uh, that basically was, uh, I think, basically dead. And there is another system that was in 1995 by Charlie Bowman, who wanted to do accelerated transmutation of waste from Los Alamos National Lab. And that project cost was about $100 billion in 1996, so that dead uh, as a result. And now we have the SNS, and that is a pulsed machine, but that technology can be further developed with uh, quite a bit of time required for that. So there is actually a, a project in Belgium, which is known as Amira, which is supposed to be uh, based on this uh, proton-based accelerators. And it is expected to be operational up to only 100 MeV acceleration uh, energies by about 2030s. And a similar program for uh, the transmutation of waste is being pursued in China, which is called CADS. And that is also going to take quite a bit of time. And this uh, basically is the current status. And if you look back at uh, Professor Kurukawa's design of AMSB, uh, he stated at that time in 2010 it requires more than uh, $20 billion and several decades to bring this up. And unfortunately, uh, this is not being taken up by anyone yet. And he envisaged but that if we build about 20 to 25 of these systems around the world, uh, we can power all the nuclear power plants with thorium, which is uranium-233, uh, to meet the energy needs. So in fact, what we have come up with a similar system, but based on electron energy, uh, which is only about 50 MeV required. This is a, our plans to build this, which can be built uh, within the next 
two to three years if the funds are available. Uh, I could say that confidently because uh, the system we are going to see that is built at the university is supposed to have been done within 20 months. So if I think we will be able to build the required electron source for this uh, within a year and a half, and the whole project can be completed by 2029. And that's what we hope to do when the funds are available. So I actually presented uh, this concept uh, to the Virginia Nuclear Energy Consortium Authority, and we hope to build a research center in Yorktown. And uh, Oak Ridge was uh, really very happy to work with us until we found out that the thorium fuel cycle will not be supported in the US. So we had to go to India, and hopefully, by the end of this year, we may have some support for this project. And in this process, we are actually organizing an international nuclear hydrogen conference so that we can bring all the players together so that hydrogen economy can be implemented with this kind of distributed energy uh, based on ASMRs that are using thorium uh, as a fuel. So, so what we are trying to do is uh, we are seeking world community support for developing economic, super safe, and efficient ASMRs, pro providing clean air and water for humanity, as envisaged by USA's Alvin Weinberg and India's Swami Baba. ANS, BRC, BSC, DAE, uh, in collaboration with the India's largest power corporation, National Thermal Power Corporation, we are organizing this conference in August. Uh, please get in touch with me if you would like to get an invitation. Uh, you will be the guest of NTPC. They will take care of all your requirements uh, in India. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Do you think uh, the accelerator-driven technology like, I uh, can't believe I'm bringing them up twice, but like Shine and the guys who are making the nuclear medicines and, and isotopes, is that also under your con consideration? I mean, so basically, yeah, yeah the uh, North Star is using uh, IBA uh, rhodotrons to do the same, similar thing for producing isotopes like actinium-225, which could be byproduct of our ASMR as well. And also Niave, another company uh, in Michigan, is also using a 30 MeV electron LINAC producing copper 67 and actinium 225 as well as uh, uh, technetium 99. So uh, NRC has already approved those. And I think David is going to discuss about the safety of the MSRs. So our technology is really very simple. And with all that, I think U.S. could make the uh, lead in this, but unfortunately, I think uh, the head is in the sand. They won't see it. They could be the world leaders, and as uh, envisaged by President Dwight Eisenhower, U.S. could provide the clean energy for the world, and unfortunately, we are not. We are a failure because of the the technologies we are implementing here. Uh, my question is, what do you think it would take in terms of time and money to get to a 10 megawatt kind of pilot setup? 10 megawatts thermal. Uh, it will be less than three years. And how much money? Uh, $50 million. I think the reality is a lot of this stuff's going to have to be privately funded. So, thank yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, if they could build the, uh, whatever they are doing here, MSRE for 30 million. So all we need is another $10 million for the uh, electron system, electron beam power system. It's, they, all the elements exist. There's nothing new here. Well, just, just ask Next Lab if you can put an addition on their facility. Yeah, and then that. you have, just have to put up three walls instead of four. Yeah. So it's cost savings right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks again. Got it, buddy. Uh,